Greetings and welcome to Gripping Horror. Font Estramar resembles a complex labyrinth of corridors and dead ends, where losing your way is not an option. Due to the numerous accidents, Font Estramar has a very bad reputation as a killer sinkhole. In 1955, during a television shoot with Garouk Taziev, diver Jean-Claude Guitard lost his way in an annex of the South Gallery and died there before his body was eventually sealed in the cave. This fatal accident justified a temporary ban on diving at Fort Estremar. But the popularity of this Catalan source only continued to grow, and unfortunately, the Black Series continued. These are the Font Estremar disasters. Font Estremar, well known to divers around the world, is the deepest resurgence explored in diving in Europe and the fifth deepest in the world. It was on the initiative of Professor Petit, director of the Aragon Laboratory in banyuls sur mer that on August the 27th, 1949, two officers of the 11th BPC, Shock Parachute Battalion, Lieutenant De Pay and Lieutenant George, dived into the abyss equipped with a Cousteau Gagnon autonomous diving apparatus. They dove through an entrance in the form of a porch about four meters below the surface, at the very foot of the cliff which overlooks the basin. From there, they progress into a vertical shaft approximately six meters high, opening into a large, totally submerged room, 14 meters from where two opposing galleries appear to branch off, one towards the south, and the other towards the north. Noting that these galleries continue to sink inextricably into the mountain, the divers prefer not to explore further and decide to go back up for lack of more suitable equipment. Followed by the expeditions carried out in 1951 by Cousteau, Taziev and other great divers, several secondary galleries were explored around the main conduit. The depth reached in 1955 was 50 meters, the techniques of the time not allowing it to go any lower. In the 1970s, Claude Toulon GM explored a total of 850 meters of galleries in several branches of the network. In 1981, Francis Legrain advanced in the main conduit to the Well of Silence, 410 meters, and explored it down to 58 meters. In 1991, the ARFE Research Association of Font Estremar was created and the depth of 164 meters was reached on August the 15th, 1997 by the Swiss Cyril Brandt. Pascal Barnaby continued to 184 meters on June the 4th, 2006. Jordi Heller, a Catalan diver, descended to 191 meters without finding a continuation of the sump in July 2013. On August the 16th, 2013, Xavier Meniscus, equipped with a double rebreather and helped by a large international team, continued the exploration of the cavity in the giant locum well, located 513 meters from the entrance to a depth of 248 meters, 900 meters from the start, bringing the development of the cavity to approximately 2,900 meters. In July 2015, the same diver, with the help of around 15 team members, pushed back the exploration by around 30 meters to a depth of 262 meters. In June 2019, Xavier Meniscus continued his exploration over a distance of 50 meters horizontally to a depth of 262 meters to reach the lip of a vertical well. After these three explorations, on December 30, 2019, Xavier Meniscus descended to 286 meters in the bowels of Font Estremar at a distance of 1,020 meters from the entrance. On November the 3rd, 2013, Marcel diver Frederick Sharczynski reached the depth of 308 meters, a new world record during a 6.59 hour dive. The abyss itself belongs to a private family of cells. The cliff is the property of the town hall. The municipality, 
like the owner's, has installed prohibition signs. Prohibition of diving and swimming for the municipality. Several meetings have already been organized on the safety of the premises, but divers' associations demand that it remain accessible and open. Specialized firefighters, especially from the Ord, state that it is important that they can train on this type of site, that it can save lives during future interventions. These discussions and contrasting views on access all began after the town experienced a pivotal moment in the summer of 1955. In the summer of 1955, excitement rippled through the coastal town of South Le Chateau as Commander Jacques Cousteau's iconic boat, Lily Monnier, graced their shores. Eager to showcase the marvels of Fonda Estrema, a group of intrepid explorers, including Dumas and his brother Jean-Claude Gutier, eagerly awaited the commander's visit. Unlike the commander's first visit in 1951, on this trip they planned to create a film about the cave, as Gurak Tassif had a film about groundwater to be finished, and the Gutier brothers told him about the magnificent resurgence of Fond Estrema, which they so loved. The first shot is going very well. Gurek Tazioff is delighted, but had to ascend with Dumas to recharge his camera. Meanwhile, Jacques, Jean-Claude and another diver by the name of Kasharu plan to take a look at a new gallery, discovered a few tens of meters from the basin. After some time passed, only two divers emerged, and Jean-Claude was not one of them. Still in shock, Jacques explained what happened to Dumas and Gurok. The three divers followed each other in this new gallery for a few meters, and then they turned the dive and planned to return. But, unexpectedly, a wall of brown water advanced towards them. In the split of a second, they couldn't see anything anymore. While all the galleries are crystal clear, the bottom of it is covered with a powdery silt that the gallery they were in succumbed to. It was at this point that Jean-Claude became separated from the group. Dumas knew that his brother only had a few minutes of life left, so he hastily grabbed his diving gear and prepared to descend. Gurak Terziev tried to stop him, but nothing, nor anyone could stop Dumas from going back down to look for his brother. The always extraordinary visibility had become equal to zero. Dumas went down as much as the lifeline permitted, he had to find Jean very quickly under the penalty of death, but he couldn't see anything. After a very long, terrible moment, Dumas turned towards the exit and the light. There's nothing more he could do. There was a very low chance that Jean had reached a pocket of air and was waiting there in the dark for rescue. Dumas would have to give his parents the hardest phone call of his life. After the accident, Dumas went to see Cousteau in Paris, who sent his great team from Marcel to continue the search for Jean, but to no avail leading to the heartbreaking decision to cease any further attempts. It is only three years after the incident, a great diver friend of Dumas, Mr. Bono, found Jean by chance. He was stuck in a chimney, almost invisible near the exit, located at a depth of seven meters. Due to the position, and difficulty with Jean's body was stuck, it was deemed unsafe to try and execute a body recovery operation. Dumas's friend Galeron and his underwater works company, Sogetram, blocked the entrance to the gallery at Dumas' request. Jean-Claude, one of the fingers of my hand, my brother, with whom I shared everything for 23 years. He entered the basin and I never saw him again. How is it possible? I try every day to remember his voice, his laughter. Rest there, Jean-Claude, in this chasm that you loved. On May the 27th, 2008, tragedy would once again cast its shadow over Fonda Estrema. The weather, though turbulent during days that built up to this tragedy, hinted at the possibility of reckless risk-taking as the cause of the calamity. Yet, the truth proved far more harrowing. A duo of Czech divers, their identities which have never been revealed to the public, 
embarked on a fateful journey into the depths of the Estremar chasm. Only one of the divers emerged from the abyss, leaving behind many unanswered questions and a sense of profound loss for his buddy. It was reported that one of the divers, aged 33, succumbed to discomfort over a hundred meters from the cave's entrance, leaving his 43-year-old dive buddy to grapple with the grim reality below. Despite valiant efforts to rescue his stricken comrade, the depths claimed their toll, forcing the surviving diver to make a gut-wrenching decision. With a heavy heart and dwindling hope, he detached the lifeline that bound them together, leaving his buddy's lifeless body behind as he ascended to seek aid. The diver went up safe and sound, but too quickly. He was immediately transported to the hyperbaric chamber of the Saint-Pierre Clinic, but thankfully, he never succumbed to any serious injuries. The alarm was raised at 3.11pm, and emergency responders swiftly mobilized. But the bad weather recorded for 48 hours made the rescuers think. Knowing that the level of the river, Le Verdouble, had risen by 50 centimeters, and that it is connected to the abyss by underground tracks, those responsible for the rescue on site believed that attempting a body recovery at 6 p.m. represented a real danger. The scuba dive of the Spilio Secure Francois team started at 10.35 p.m., which lasted 40 minutes. Amidst treacherous weather conditions and rising waters, firefighters and gendarmes coordinated a rescue operation fraught with peril. As the river Le Vaudouble surged, threatening to engulf the abyss below, divers from the Orillon Sainte Marie in the Pyrenees Atlantique braved the depths to retrieve the fallen diver's body. The two divers found the lifeless body of the victim 135 meters from the entrance at a depth of 36 meters between two boulders with his regulator out of his mouth. In the somber aftermath, questions lingered and hearts weighed heavy with sorrow. Amidst the chaos and grief, an investigation unfolded. The details emerged slowly, revealing the grim reality of a recreational dive turned tragic, but the specific details of this incident was never revealed to the public. It was speculated this was done to protect the image of Font Estrema, as not to hurt its appeal to divers around Europe. As condolences poured in from all corners, the family, friends, and loved ones of the fallen diver grappled with the harsh reality of their loss. Just four years later, Font Estremar found itself thrust into the spotlight once again. On this occasion, the victim was 52-year-old Jean-Luc Amangor, a fisherman and dedicated volunteer firefighter from Garisson, who was known for his unwavering commitment to his community and his passion for exploration. Affectionately dubbed Rambo for his impressive physical prowess, Jean-Luc was revered for his technical skill and his intimate knowledge of the natural world. From the practice of caving, he had done it as more than a hobby and had specialized in the exploration of underground galleries in the Clab. This is how he rendered countless services to Grousson, exploring caves and cavities, but also guts in search of sources. As a stalwart member of the Reconnaissance and Intervention Group, in perilous environments, Grimp and the Speedio Secure Francois, SSF, Jean-Luc had spent two decades serving on the front lines of rescue missions and exploration efforts and had reached the rank of Chief Corporal. Jean was a man who deepened everything that interested him. He also chaired another association, the Grassinois Military Heritage, for which he was looking for museum pieces. He was working to preserve and renovate the blockhouses of the Second World War on the territory of the municipality. His loss was deeply felt not only by his fellow firefighters, but also by the entire village of Grousson, where his impact extended far beyond his roles as a firefighter and fisherman. Jean-Luc's passion for exploration led him to delve into the depths of Font Estrema on a fateful night dive on Friday, May the 25th, 2012. 
It was a dive he had undertaken solo many times before. But on this occasion, tragedy struck. His companion raised the alarm when Jean-Luc failed to resurface, triggering a frantic search by the firefighters' divers' brigade. Sadly, Jean-Luc's lifeless body was discovered just meters from the chasm's exit, sending shockwaves through the tight-knit community of Grusson. As authorities launched an investigation to unravel the circumstances of his untimely demise, two major hypotheses emerged. Either a sudden medical emergency had incapacitated Jean-Luc, or a mechanical malfunction had compromised his rebreather. Amidst the grief and speculation, one thing remained certain. Jean-Luc Omegaard's legacy as a fearless explorer and dedicated community servant would endure leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of all who knew him. Jean-Luc was a very human person, expressed with emotion Major Roland Gerard in charge of the Grimp. He was very attached to human values and the homeland. He was an excellent teammate, and as a speediologist, he handled the ropes with great technicality. Jean-Luc had a very fine knowledge of the natural environment, and we counted on him with our eyes closed. Jean-Luc Armengard is survived by his two children, aged 28 and 32, who continue to keep his legacy alive. Four years passed before Fond Estremar claimed yet another life. The victim, a 50-year-old diver from Sete, Hero, met his untimely demise during an exploration of the cave on January the 23rd. 2016. Details surrounding the incident were scarce, mirroring the veil of secrecy that had resembled previous tragedies at Fonda Estrema. The diver's identity remained concealed from the public, adding to the enigma surrounding the chasm's waters. The victim's diving buddy came to the surface to alert the rescuers before he was placed in a hyperbaric chamber. The divers of CODIS 66 recovered the diver in cardiorespiratory arrest. Despite all their efforts, they were unable to revive him, and the diver died on the spot. At the time of the diving incident, the victim was in the well of the draperies, not far from the exit, at a depth of 30 meters. The divers were equipped with two 10-liter bottles of compressed air, which meant that they did not want to venture very far into the cave. One year later, Font Estremar would have its fifth fatality. During the summer of 2017, a team of five cave divers from Finland traveled to southern France for a cave diving holiday. The plan was to spend two weeks in the region and dive caves that they had been diving already before. From June the 9th to the 10th, the plan was to dive Font Estremar. The first dive day was a setup day where all safety tanks were installed to the cave and check up for the conditions of the water and line system. The second day was supposed to be the deep dive to approximately 200 meters depth. The team consisted of two deep divers, two support divers, and one person who would wait on the surface. On the setup dive on the morning of Friday, June the 9th, 2017, the maximum depth was 160 meters for the deep team and 70 meters for the support team. A total of 20 safety tanks were installed to various depths for the next day. Water conditions were good, clear visibility and 18 degrees Celsius temperature. After the dive, the teams rested and started to prepare for the next day. On Saturday, June 10th, 2017, the deep diving team which consisted of divers one and two started their descent approximately at 9 a.m. During the descent, they installed an additional backup rebreather to 100 meters. When they arrived at 200 meters depth, Diver 1 heard a loud noise behind him. When turning around, he saw that the scooter of Diver 2 had imploded and was dragging Diver 2 deeper. The scooter was attached to the diver with a pulling cord and a clip. Diver 2 was not able to release the negative scooter and was trying aggressively to swim up. Diver 1 swam after him to help and was able to cut the towing cord in 214 meter depth and they stopped descending. 
the imploded scooter continued to descend. Visibility was very bad during this event and the divers had to look for the lost guideline. During their search they found themselves in a dead end. After a quick search diver 1 found the guideline and was able to help diver 2 also to the line. But diver 2 had already suffered from reduced ability to work. Soon the situation escalated when diver 2 got stuck in the loose guidelines. Diver 1 tried to cut the guidelines and told Diver 2 to calm down, but he was already suffering from reduced level of consciousness, and very soon he went unconscious. Diver 1 could not do any more to help his friend, and was forced to leave in order to save himself. Diver 1 started his decompression from 130 meters, and the total deco time was 450 minutes at this point. Safety divers started their dive 100 minutes after the dive team started, and when meeting Diver 1, they received the information what had happened. Diver 1 was escorted to shallow water and kept under a surveillance during the decompression. Message about the accident was brought up, and Diver 5, the surface person, made the emergency call. The police and fire department arrived before Diver 1 was surfaced, and the fire department divers took the safety diver responsibility for the rest of the decompression. Diver 1 finally surfaced after 500 minutes of dive time in good physical health. The team, hired by the SSF, under judicial requisition, completed its mission on June 18, 2017. Frederick Szarczynski reached a depth of 234 meters in Font Estrema to find the body of the missing diver. He made a video and recovered the victim's computer which he handed over to the judicial authorities. The operation lasted four days, during which time the cave was equipped with a safety line dimensioned for the planned dives. When asked about the feasibility of recovering the body, none of those involved said it was feasible without excessive risk. One year later, Font Estremar claimed yet another unfortunate soul adding another tragic chapter to its publicized history of death. Mark Schwarzny, born in Antwerp, February 1, 1962, was an adventurer, sportsman, keynote speaker, mental coach and author. Through extreme sports, he searched to overcome his mental and physical boundaries. He broke several records, including for swimming across the English Channel, sky jumping from a balloon, climbing the Annapurna without an oxygen mask and gliding above the Andes, and participated many times in the European and World Championships in different disciplines. During the last few years, Mark focused on coaching executive teams and high-level athletes. Mark Schwarzny had also been a member of the Belgian Davis Cup tennis team and was also an accomplished fencer. During his dive, which took place on June the 28th, 2018, Mark and his buddy got separated when their buddy line broke at 125 meters depth in the vertical gallery. Poet de Locom. His buddy, Dennis Kozlau, could reach the surface. He didn't. The dive was preceded by two preparation days. The route preparation, bailout and decompression station preparation. The dive took place on an open cycle, using diver propulsion vehicles. The dive involved 16 cylinders and three diver propulsion vehicles and dry suits. Bottom gas, Trimix 960 stage and bailout gases, Trimix 2030, EAN 32. Deco gases, EAN 50, EAN 80, EAN 100. The maximum permissible depth was planned at 125 meters the estimated maximum distance of 550 meters from the entrance. At the final stage of the dive in the vertical gallery, Pui de Locum, 23 to 25 minutes after their initial descent at depth 100 meters, Mark ignored the breakage of the main line and did not, responding on the signals, continued descent to a depth of 114 to 117 meters, where the gallery does a sharp turn. This point was the last place of visual contact with Mark. Primary search and rescue lasted until 3 a.m. the next day, but unfortunately did not bring any results. 
The repeated search operation began at the request of the Prosecutor of the Republic on July the 9th, 2018. The initial decision was to not organize a search for Mark because of risks, and the family agreed. But then the authorities decided to send a search party, which led to another death. On June the 9th, 2018, at 8 a.m., began a search operation consisting of 16 people and unit Speedio Secure Francois on the detection and lifting of the body of Mark Schwozny. During the preparatory work and search in the Park Zebra area, rescuer Lauren Richau failed to resurface. The operation had started well, with the first dive of recognition by the pair of divers who visited the side galleries on the network. However, there was an incident during the return of the mission, at the time that the divers emerged from the resurgence. Lauren Rashel's body was rushed to the surface by his dive partner. Lauren died while trying to shoot a video on the state of the emergency. Besides the provided facts, no further information, such as the cause of Lauren's untimely passing, was ever released. According to the friends of NSS CDS instructors, Mark was completely unprepared for such dives. Yes, he was extreme, but such dives require global training. It would not be until September the 3rd, 2018, that Mark's body was retrieved from the cave, bringing closure to his family and friends. Deceived by a few quiet years instant free, the public dared to believe that Font Estremar's dark history had reached its conclusion. However, disaster struck once more, claiming its most recent victim to date on July the 19th, 2023. Engineer by profession, living in the clermont ferrand in the Pointe de Dorme, Dominique Azam was also a very experienced diver. He was an emeritus diver who had been part of Luke Long's team for about 10 years, an underwater archaeologist who, in 2008, discovered one of the only busts of Julius Caesar carved during his lifetime, immersed in the Rhone. Beyond his professional qualities, he was a very endearing person, a big kid, pleasant and helpful. Dom had a handicap, but he did not let it limit him. Dominique suffered from deafness, so in diving he was his happiest. Underwater, his team all communicated by signs. It compensated. On Wednesday, July the 19th, 2023, Dominique arrived at Font Estremar with his dive buddy. After their bottom time, Dominique reportedly had a heart attack during the ascent. Despite the care of the friend who accompanied him, then help, he unfortunately did not survive. Font Estremar stands as a paradox, a captivating abyss that has both lured explorers with its beauty and claimed lives with its treacherous depths. From the early days of Commander Cousteau's exploration to the recent tragedies that befell daring divers, Font Estremar remains a mystery that has left the cave diving community with more questions than answers. May all the victims rest in peace. This has been Gripping Horror. I hope to see you in the next one.